Good morning, happy Friday. I have Neuro Coffee in hand and it is perfect. All right, what a fabulous week. So this has been, been a great week, got a lot done. Very, very busy, which is actually kind of cool considering the circumstances that we're all dealing with. So I'm feeling pretty good about stuff. Um, we did get delayed here in Indiana. Uh, a little bit more. So uh, we were planning on, on opening up IFS this this weekend. Um, we're not going to be able to do that. So we got another couple week delay, but that doesn't mean we can't be productive and can't be successful. So let us rock on. I do have a question that I've been holding for a while. So that would be a great way to kind of go into the weekend um, because it, it's a little bit off the beaten path from what we typically talk about when we're talking about structure and behaviors of movement and such. And um, this, this question comes from, from Carmine. And Carmine says, I uh, appreciate the content you've continued to put out during these times. So thank you, uh, Carmine. Uh, I have a question in regards to your model. George Box said, all models are wrong, some are useful. Uh, what would you say are the limitations of your model and how do the limitations of your model influence your decision making? So thanks Carmine for this. This is really, really good. And thanks for mentioning George Box because it is now standard operating procedure to mention George Box in every circumstance where we're talking about models because of that quote. So I love that quote. Um, so let's talk about this for a minute. So when we talk about the, the, the limitation on the model that I use, Carmine, the greatest limitation is me um, because I'm the human involved in this. And so because I do make the decisions and I do um, determine what I'm, I'm willing to utilize, then I become that limitation. And so, so one of the things that we have to understand about being human is that uh, we are emotionally driven. So people think they make, make decisions based on logic. We tend to make decisions based on emotion and then we superimpose logic on top of that to reinforce our emotionally driven decisions, which is, which is kind of like a, a neat process. But if you're aware of that, then that helps a lot. Um, we're also irrational, we can't see reality. And so we have to rely on modeling. So everything that we do, um, everything that we, we visualize or, or think we understand, it tends to be a model because the complexity of reality is probably too overwhelming for us to even recognize or understand. And so even like your, your vision, the, the things that we physically see is, is merely a modeled representation because it's just way too complex to take in that, that detail. Um, so as you said, all models are wrong. And, and so I understand that. And um, I would refer you to a, a, a mental model that is, that is very useful um, called, called the map is not the territory. So when we're talking about human movement, um, some of the, the models that we've used in the past are, are mere representations of what we think that we understand. So I make fun of dead guy anatomy a lot because one, well, it's, it's very, very easy, but it's also a, 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 a uh, somewhat useful representation is because there is some of that stuff that that does influence how we can perceive movement uh, to be created. But we also have to understand that, that the cadaver is not the human. So cadavers don't breathe, they don't move. They tend to be dry and, and um, not fluid based. And so again, we have to re recognize the limitations of that model. And so when the map is not the territory, um, what it means is, is, that, is that we're using something to help us create a smaller, more manageable representation of what the reality, reality is. So let's just use a silly representation. So if I had a map of the United States that was actual size, so one mile equals one mile, not only would it be incredibly difficult to fold, but um, it couldn't even be, I mean, it, we, we can't even create this this representation, it would be ridiculous. So we have to use a smaller version that is not the reality, but that is representative so we can manage the complexity. So that's what, what we're talking about here. Um, as a human, there are certain things that I value, there are certain things based on my experience, and there are certain things that I'm capable of seeing uh, that, that limit what I will be able to take in. So what I see as salient or what I see as important is different from everybody else. And so last night I ran a little social experiment on Instagram and I threw up an opinion, I threw up a graphic and I threw up a, an explanation. 
and I knew as soon as I put it up there that I should expect to get some dissenting opinions. So thank you for those people that have the dissenting opinions. I truly appreciate your participation because you actually fulfilled my prophecy, which which was that I was going to get some some blowback on that. So I knew it was going to happen because people will only take in certain bits of information. So even if they were fully informed, even if they read the entire explanation of what I was talking about, they saw it through a limited lens. And so then they reacted emotionally and they responded uh, appropriately based on those circumstances. So that was awesome to see. So I, I, I do love dissenting opinions. They're, they're valuable imp- opinions because um, even though they're incredibly wrong and misinformed and emotionally based, they are useful to help us check our own work. And so, so again, I do value that. And so then I have to take my experiences into consideration too. And so, so let's just say that you work with uh, developing athletes, young developing athletes, and then an, another guy works with high level professionals and you're having a discussion, you're going to speak through those lenses. And so you might actually have disagreements as to what is most valuable in developing an athlete, but you're only speaking from your experience and, and you're speaking from the information that you see valuable. But this is why we see these silly arguments on social media about, about certain things. So uh, there was one on Twitter not too long ago where there were pe- people talking about return to play aspects and what you had to measure and what was important. And so you had a group of, of, of physical therapists that, that do the return to play conditioning. And then you've had some strength conditioning coaches that, that, that do some of the, the, the end elements of, of that return to play. And they're speaking from their own experiences. And so of course they're going to have disagreements as to, as to what needs to be measured and what needs to be valued. Um, If you branded yourself a manual therapist, uh, manual physical therapist, you're going to see through that lens. And so, of course, then then your arguments are going to be based based on that. Um, I have cognitive biases just like everybody else does that prevent me from accepting information. I also seek information to confirm my biases because I am human. That, That is just one of our behaviors. But again, recognizing those facts helps me sort of get over that to some degree, but I always know that that's going to exist. And and so um, that's why I, I am such a stickler about avoiding um, the singular viewpoint. So I, I challenge people to not fall into a singular system because it, it immediately becomes a limitation because everything that you do uh, when, when you adopt that singular viewpoint is I will acquire a tool that supports that or I will acquire more information that supports that and, and you become more and more limited. It doesn't mean you can't be successful because there will be points and times where that viewpoint will be very useful but then you've immediately limited yourself in your scope of application. So how do we overcome these? Well, one, recognize the fact that your model is not reality. You can't see it, you're just using a representation so it can't be right. Doesn't mean it's not useful, just means it's not right. But the recognition that that you're not seeing reality um, lets you know that there is probably a better model that is closer to the truth. And so the goal then is to refine and seek out the truth and to continuously evolve your model. So don't get stuck in, in, in one place when you're, when you're developing the model. Try to avoid the emotional reaction to opposing viewpoints and, and other models. Not all opinions are valid, and, and, and I totally agree with that, but we can leverage the opposition to our advantage. So again, if I get a dissenting opinion that I don't agree with, and I, and I recognize that they're just not fully informed or they're ignorant or they're naive or they're just merely reacting emotionally, I can still use that to my advantage. I can still leverage that information to allow me to, to check my own work or, or allow me to identify it. Is there a gap in my reasoning? Is there a gap in my thinking? So I, so I do take those things into consideration, but the goal is to not react emotionally because once you do that, then you're immediately blocked from accepting any, any new information. Get comfortable with the gray areas, get comfortable with not knowing and understanding that, that the, the complexity that we deal with reduces our ability uh, to predict things. And so we're always playing off of probabilities, but our experience and time and, and influences allow us to narrow those probabilities over time, and that's how we get better. Um, I have friends that are really, really smart, really creative thinkers, and then I have, I have also friends that, that are not in the same uh, environment that, that I work in, and so I consider them my naive experts. So they're really, really smart people, 
And if I ask them questions, they can ask the questions that I wouldn't even think to ask. And so that becomes very, very valuable to have people like that. Um, I share information a great deal. Um, because I want the opposing viewpoints. I, I don't want, I don't need yes men. I, I just need people that, that, that are good thinkers um, that have other viewpoints and other experiences because I can't know everything. I can't be involved in every environment. And so I can't have the, the all the answers, but other people have other answers that might be assisting me um, in, in evolving my model. Um, Ultimately, what I look for when, when I'm trying to overcome these, these things is I'm looking for consistencies. So when I intervene or when I'm evolving a process or I'm asking questions, I'm looking for the consistency um, in the outcome because that's the closest thing that I can probably get to truth and, and reality. So I see the same thing coming up over and over and over again then I, I, can, I can start to reinforce that in my model to some degree. But this is, this is what science is. So this is where we do the experiment. So we experiment, we see what happens. We experiment, we see what happens. The more times you see the same thing arising, so when I see that consistency, that's, those are the things that I start to intertwine um, and, and um, contribute to the evolution of the model. Um, and then finally, what I would say is, is um, remain patient. You've got time to evolve a model. But I say patience with a sense of urgency. So, so it's kind of like the duck on the on the pond. You know, you see the duck smoothly going across the water, but underneath he's kicking like crazy. And and so always working, always trying to evolve. But understand that that you need to be patient and and let some of this evolution take place. So hopefully, that gives you a little bit of a of a of a framework as to as to how I see this this whole model perspective. Um, I, I try to recognize my limitations, knowing full well that I am the greatest limitation on the evolution of, of, of how I model this complexity um, within the, the realm that I work or the, the world in general. And, and so, again, I hope that's helpful for you, Carmine. If it's not, please ask another question. I love this question. love talking about this stuff. So um, I will stop my rambling for Friday. You guys have a great weekend, and I'll see you next week.